Rosie Ruiz, the fraudulent winner of the 1980 Boston Marathon. I will be very sad for them that they're disqualifying me because when I run in the next race and they see what, what I can really do, they're, go they're gonna be very upset about it. I had one minute to feel that I had won the race. And every moment after that has been a moment. Rosie Ruiz today denied that she cheated to become the women's winner in Monday's Boston Marathon. Phony baloney Ro Rosie Ruiz. Let me pose this to both of you. Rosie, there are those that say that your improvement in time is impossible. Now, uh, Bill, have you heard before From the New York of, Marathon, right? Yes, the improvement from the first marathon you ran. Right, yeah. thank you, Michael. But uh, is that, does that happen in a marathon where you're pushing so hard, it's like, uh, and, mm. you and you do the impossible? And mm. you do the impossible? And you do the impossible? And you do the impossible? The Boston Marathon is one of the most prestigious and historic marathons in the world. It is the oldest annual marathon, with the first being held in 1897 and is held every third Monday in April on Patriots Day. The race starts in Hopkinton and finishes at Copley Square in Boston, covering a grueling distance of 26.2 miles. Meet Rosie Ruiz. She was able to win the 1980 Boston Marathon race, finishing the race with an unbelievable time of 2 hours, 31 minutes, and 56 seconds, beating out the 1979 women's first place time from Joanne Benoit with a time of 2 hours, 35 minutes, and 15 seconds. Ruiz became an overnight success, getting awarded the laurel wreath and getting interviewed by countless reporters without even practicing or breaking a sweat. But it all came tumbling down. Let me tell you what happened. Born in Havana on July 21, 1953, Ruiz was a young girl filled with dreams and aspirations. At just 8 years old, she was forced to leave her home and embark on a new journey to Florida, far from the arms of her beloved mother. Despite the challenges she faced as an immigrant, the Ruiz refused to let that get to her. She threw herself into her studies, pouring all of her energies into her passion for music. And with hard work and determination, she earned a degree from Wayne State College in Nebraska. October 21st, 1979 Rosie Ruiz participated in her first marathon. New York City Marathon, thousands of runners powered through 26.2 miles across all five boroughs. They started their day on Staten Island, then ran through Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx before ending in Manhattan. When she filled out her application form, she wrote down her estimated completion time as 4 hours and 10 minutes, which was a decent time for an average person, but not competitive for professional marathoners. However, 10 miles into the race, Ruiz allegedly hurt her ankle, and instead of continuing the race, she took the subway to the finish line. Despite passing through several barriers, she claimed herself as an injured runner and was taken to the medical area by the marathon volunteers. The officials recorded her completion time as 2 hours, 56 minutes, and 29 seconds unaware of her shortcut. But with Ruiz's completion, that got her the last spot out of 50 marathoners to be eligible for the Boston Marathon. April 21st, 1980. Rosie Ruiz, the mystery woman winner. We missed her at all our checkpoints. She came through the finish in a fantastic 2.31. We have to confirm that time at this point, but she was way ahead of a world-class field here today in the Boston Marathon. Thank you, Rose. Thank you. Rosie Ruiz shocked the world when she won the Boston Marathon in the women's division with a time of two hours, 31 minutes and 56 seconds, beating out Jacqueline Garreau, who came in third place in the 1979 New York City Marathon. This seemed a bit odd. The 50th place women's runner beat the third place runner? Ruiz seemingly came out of nowhere to claim the victory in the 26 mile race. But the truth is Ruiz had only jumped out of the crowd and sneaked into the race about a mile away from the finish line. The suspicions only grew stronger after Ruiz's TV interview, where she admitted to only having participated in one other marathon, the New York City Marathon. She claimed to have finished the race in 2 hours, 56 minutes, and 33 seconds. What was the time in your first ever marathon and where was it? It was 2 hours and 56 minutes and 33 seconds in New York last year. And so you improved from 2, two hours and 56 minutes to 2 hours and 31 minutes. What, I what, guess so. What do you attribute that improvement in time to? Um, I don't know. 
up. When asked how she improved her speed and running time by a whole 25 minutes in just 6 months, Ruiz simply replied that she had been training on her own without further explanation. During an interrogation about her interval training and workouts, Ruiz appeared thoroughly confused and unable to answer the questions. She couldn't recall many things that several athletes were expected to know by heart. And adding to the mystery was the fact that Ruiz was perfectly composed after the race, without any signs of fatigue, breathlessness, or sweat. Have you been doing a lot of heavy intervals? Um, someone else asked me that. I'm not sure what intervals are. <laughs> what are they? Well, intervals are, are track workouts that are designed to make your speed improve dramatically. And if you went from a 256 to a 231, one would normally expect that you'd do a lot of speed work. Is, is someone coaching you or advising you? Uh, no, I advise myself. <laughs> when Ruiz released stress test results showing her resting heart rate at 76, it was significantly higher than other female marathoners who had a resting heart rate in the 50s or lower. Several female competitors also reported that they never saw Ruiz overtaking Jacqueline Garreau or Patty Leons at any point in the race. Despite being awarded the laurel for winning the race that she almost didn't run, questions about her sudden victory began to arise. People couldn't understand how she managed to win when she had not been seen at any of the checkpoints along the course. The two had been leading the race at the 18 and 17 mile mark. Thus, the question on everybody's mind was, where had Ruiz come from? Following Ruiz's interview and controversy, several back checks were made on the 1979 New York Marathon, and it was discovered that Ruiz had only falsified details. Remember when Ruiz took the subway to the finish line? Well, Miss Susan Moreau, a freelance photographer, had also came forward to denounce Ruiz's claims of winning the marathon race. According to Miss Morrow, on the exact same day on the New York City Marathon, she coincidentally took the same subway at the same time as Ruiz. She sat beside Ruiz and struck up a conversation. They both had been on the subway through the span of the marathon, and they both had watched Greta Waits cross the finish line and win the 1979 New York Marathon Women category. In a matter of days, Ruiz's victory in the Boston Marathon became shrouded in controversy and scandal. She had captured the media's attention with her impressive finish time, but as details emerged, it became very clear that her victory was far from legitimate. The race organizers scoured over tens of thousands of photographs taken during the marathon, as well as witness accounts and observations to uncover the truth. Uh, in front of me, across the street, this was on Commonwealth Ave, probably about a half mile from the finish. Um, she was in track clothes and wearing a number, but I thought someone had just sort of stumbled into the race, maybe somebody was a little crazy or something. To the shock and disbelief of the running community, Ruiz was nowhere to be found in the photographic evidence or witness accounts until the last lap of the race, where she suddenly appeared on the course at Kenmore Square, a mere mile from the finish line. Despite being disqualified from the race, Ruiz stubbornly stuck to her story. I don't have to prove myself innocent to anyone because I know that I ran it. Insisting that she had won fair and square, the Canadian runner Jacqueline Garreau was declared the true winner of the race, and her victory was celebrated as a triumph for fairness and integrity in the sport. Garreau's time of 2 hours, 34 minutes, and 28 seconds was recognized as the fastest record time for a woman in the Boston Marathon, while Patty Leon's another top runner, was moved up to second place and was honored as the fastest American woman in the marathon with a time of 2 hours, 35 minutes, and 8 seconds. The story of Rosie Ruiz remains the biggest scandals in the history of marathon running, a cautionary tale of what can happen when ambition and greed overstep the boundaries of fair play. The truth about what really happened that day has never been fully uncovered, but the shadow it casts over the sport remains a haunting reminder of the consequences of cheating. Rosie Ruiz, a seemingly ordinary woman from New York, rose to infamy in the world of marathon running with her mysterious victory at the 1980 Boston Marathon. Despite being plagued with suspicion and controversy, Ruiz insisted that she had run the entire race and deserved the championship. Because I know that I ran it! Yet whispers of her cheating circulated when an acquaintance, Steve Merrick, revealed that Ruiz had confided him in the months after the race, admitting that she did not fully run the entire marathon. 
In 1982, she was accused for grand larceny and forgery, facing charges for allegedly stealing $60,000 from her workplace. It was a blow that would have defeated many, but Ruiz refused to be broken. She moved back to Florida, determined to start over. But fate had other plans. In 1983, Ruiz found herself behind bars once again, this time for attempting to sell two kilos of cocaine to undercover agents. But was it all a scheme for recognition and fame? As Ruiz's name lived on in the infamy long after her death. She is infamous for cheating to win the Boston Marathon in 1980. And after a period of speculation, we have learned that Rosie Ruiz has died. Rosie, that you even doubt now that whether you ran the race or not. No, there's no doubt in my mind. I know what I did and, 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 and I will prove it again in the future. It begs the question if she was seeking to leave a lasting legacy in the face of her own morality. As a cancer patient with limited time on this earth, perhaps she sought to be remembered, not as an ordinary person, but as a record-setting marathon. In a cruel twist of fate, her fame was built on the foundation of deceit, but her story continues to captivate the hearts and minds of so many. Was it a desperate plea for recognition, a search for purpose in her final days, or simply a desire to leave a lasting legacy? Whatever the reason, Reese's story remains a haunting reminder of the power of ambition and the lengths one may go to be remembered. As she took her last breath in July of 2019, at the age of 66, her name and her story will forever be a part of the annals of marathon history, a testament to the mystery and allure that still surrounds her infamous victory in Boston. If you stayed till the end of this video, I'm so glad you did. We have looked into the life of the infamous fraudster, Rosie Ruiz, and receiving the Laurel Prize for a race she didn't fully run. Several persons credit Ruiz's action to the brain cancer which she was said to suffer at the time. What are your thoughts on this? Kindly drop your opinions in the comment section below and give this video a thumbs up. And if you enjoyed the content, please subscribe.